Welcome back, everyone. Well, in our never-ending quest to find interesting artistic organizations and dance companies, we found one. This one's called the Loose Change Dance Collective. And joining me today are the two principals in this company, Lori Zebley Cauley. Excellent. I got it. <laughs> Excellent. That's really good. You are the artistic director and the founder. And Deb Rutledge. Deb Rutledge, who is... Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I also a choreographer yes. and company member, I think is the way you described it to me, right? Yes. Well, welcome, both of you. Very nice to have you here. Mm -hmm. um, Loose Change Dance Collective. Let's, uh, let's tell our viewers what that company stands for. Well, the company stands for, our mission is to redefine what a dance artist looks like through strong works and performances. Mm. It is a multi-generational group. Um, we have dancers that range from 15 to 65. Wow. Um, beautiful dancers. What we find is that as dancers usually get a little older, like in their mid-20s, they start to think, oh, I'm too old, my body's starting to give out, and they retire way too soon. Mm -hmm. And it's just when they're starting to really become artists. So what we've done is give a platform for these artists that may not um, be 20 anymore, but they are beautiful dancers, they are beautiful people, and they have a lot to offer the stage. So we would like to challenge the audience to say, are we still relevant as we get older? Mm -hmm. Are we still relevant as artists? In, in music, you can go on forever. Well, you know what? There are many cultures that think the opposite. You know? Absolutely. If you think about that, that you know, there's a real respect for experience and age and wisdom and the whole sense of mentoring. And I, I agree with you. I think sometimes in this country, we don't really pay respect to that. Uh, you said something very interesting, Deb, before we went on, that dance is the one universal characteristic to all human beings because it's movement. Right. Talk about that. Well, we all move, right? We all have to <laughs> yes, we do. get out of bed and go on with our day. And so dance has a unique ability to touch every person of every age on mm -hmm. some level because it's a universal language of movement. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, um, and when you think about dance, and we're very fortunate in this area that, you know, we have New York City Ballet and SMAC, and that's, uh, some people would classify that as traditional dance or whatever, but modern dance has a sort of a different bend to it. It, uh, more interpretive, more free-spirited or whatever. So you have, you can explore movement in many ways, right? Absolutely. And so talk to me about your thinking as a choreographer when you sort of face that challenge of saying, you know, I'm, it's about movement and I've got a very eclectic, diverse group of dancers here. How do you mold to them? Well, I think you get to know the artist and their strengths, for one. And I think, too, that it's the intention of the piece. It's not so much how many turns you can do, how high mm. your leg gets. It's about the intention and the quality and the truth and the authenticity they bring to the stage. Mm -hmm that is m the most important thing, I think, whether it is a young company or an old older company. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people interpret modern dance, if you were to make an analogy with music, you have classical music for traditional dance companies, you have jazz. I've often heard that jazz, because of its improvisational nature, is very akin to modern dance because it does loosen up the interpretation and mm -hmm. the innovation in terms of movement, in terms of uh, interpreting the piece of music and whatever. Now, there's a performance coming up on June 16th, Thursday night, June 16th, at the GE Theater at Proctor's in Schenectady. Mm -hmm. uh, great little theater, by the way. I was just there recently for a performance. And the music that they're performing is very eclectic. Tell us about the music. Well, we have everything from Bach to Philip Glass to um, a one-man Appalachian band to Etta James. Wow. There's an Astor Piazzolla piece, so there really is something for everybody. Well, there is. Piece. Now, you're a choreographer as well, Deb. Correct. And the pieces that you are presenting in this performance mm -hmm. uh, choreographed to Philip Glass, Correct. right? Yes. Tell me why. Um, the music is so monotonous mm -hmm. in, a, in a wonderfully rigid way 
that it give I felt that it gave me a great opportunity to kind of bust the monotony open mm -hmm. in a way and kind of show the juxtaposition between uh, rigidity and freedom. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might have uh, wanted to talk to Jerome Robbins about that because <laughs> his interpretation of doing glass pieces, which the City Ballet does, and that mm -hmm. was very, I was very a breakthrough piece for them at the time as well. But it was true; it was taking that rigid structure of Philip Glass and finding ways to bend the rules right. around it. Um, and some of it actually just focused right on the rigidity, and in that there was a, an interpretation. Yes, yes. you know what it's I mean. Hard, well, it's hard to ignore. Uh -huh. that. <laughs> rigidity, but you, you, you know. So you play with. Uh, the performance on the sixteenth, Lori. The yes. uh, all of the pieces are original pieces from the uh, loose change. Well, I have three pieces. Yes. Deb has a, a piece. Mary Beth Hampshire, who is in a choreo or is a dancer, a member as well, has choreographed a piece. And there's one piece that's from a woman out of Tennessee, Whit mm. Whit Hill, Satrakian. Um, that is an interesting piece that's done to the Etta James. How did you, uh, how did you find that piece? Actually, I used to work with Etta. I have performed that piece many years ago. Oh, and no I kidding. asked if it would be okay for our company to perform it, and she said yes. Oh, so we're oh. grateful for that. It's a fun, fun piece about a love triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, uh, you know, I, I happen to be a real fan of, uh, of modern dance. Uh, and when you come across a company that just takes the challenge on of interpreting music in a different way and finds an eclectic group of personalities to sort of work with, and it's, I think it's fascinating. So at any rate, your mission, should you choose to accept it, uh, the website is loosechangedancecollective.com. And by the time you finish typing that, it may be June 16th. <laughs> Loose Change Dance collective.com. You can find out all kinds of information about the company and also about this performance on June 16th, Thursday night at the uh, GE Theater and located at Proctor's. May I say too, you sure, can get the course. tickets right there at the, on our website. Yes, of course. Okay, good. And you can get them at the door as well. Right? Absolutely. A lot of people in the summer make up their minds at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you both very much for coming in. I really applaud you for taking on this challenge. It's a wonderful challenge. Well, thank you for this opportunity. You're quite welcome. <laughs> to see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com. <laughs>